a Boxing Week celebration, and the fans immediately boo. And so out comes Callis, Kyle Fletcher, Takesh, and Hobbs. And Don grabs a mic, and he says, I've had a la- rough last couple of weeks, but, you know, family. There's always family with me. And I want to thank you guys for everything you've done. And so he's got paintings for everybody. And the first is a painting of Hobbs and Callis. Second is Takesh and Don, and Don's got the full Roman Reigns tats. Third is Don and Kyle boxing kangaroos. And there's one picture left, but before he can reveal it, out comes Sammy, who is not happy. And he says, you know, Don, long time no talk. And Don says, wait, didn't you get the gift I sent for the kid? Sammy says, I did not. And Don says, well, you know, I've been I've been hauling this last picture around for weeks in case you decided to come back to work. Why don't you check it out? So Sammy looks at the picture. He pulls off the thing, and it's... Uh, it's Sammy, the baby, and the Don Callis family. And Sammy is furious that Don has a painting of his baby out there. Fans chant, you fucked up. And Don says, you know, you're mentally incapable of being a parent. You're going to need all the help you can get here. And Sammy starts cutting a promo on him that all he cares about is himself, and he's not getting any of these guys over. And <laughs> Don says, you know, you're disappointed I didn't call you. I'm disappointed. You dropped the ball when you got hurt. Going out having babies, maternity leave been five months. So you either need to uh, choose your other family or the Don Callis family. But before you answer, think about this. You're going to be as big a failure as a wrestler as you'll be as a parent. So, of course, Sammy shoves Don. The family jumps Sammy. They're stomping a mud hole in him. Chris Jericho's music hits. He runs down to make the save. They destroy all the paintings with the bat. And then Jericho and Sammy, they're going to shake hands. But Sammy hugs him instead. And then they're immediately jumped by Starks and Big Bill. And then the lights go out. Sting and Darby are in the ring. They destroy Ricky and Bill. That sets up the eight-man coming up on the pay-per-view. Which, of course, they had to do something because, I mean, Kenny Omega is not going to be back anytime soon. Yeah. For this, I don't uh, know. Golden I thought they should, have done, they should have done a tag title match since. I thought that's what they were going to do. Yeah. Jericho and Sammy facing Starks and Big Bill for the tag titles, but they yeah. decided eight man instead. Well, it, it gives Sting, it gets Sting on the show, and gets Sting another win. And um, you know, I think that they don't want to beat, um, they probably don't want to beat Jericho and Sammy right away, and they don't want to change the titles either, because uh, Big Bill and uh, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking, but I, I thought that they should just have done a tag title match. But, uh, you know, they got this match instead. And it's easier to book, you know, as far as like, you know, one would think that uh, Sting's side should win because the whole gimmick is is that Sting never loses, has never lost a match in AEW. Then we had Renee with Roddy, and he has vowed to prove that Max is the devil. He's got a flow chart. Then we had the second final, which was Brian Danielson, Eddie Kingston, Blue League Finals, and uh, another excellent match. I, I thought this was the best match of the entire tournament. Of the entire I think, tournament? I think so, yeah. No, I don't know about I thought that. So. Man, Why, what do you think was better? I don't know, but this was a great tournament. I've seen a lot of great matches. No, there was a, there was a lot of great matches. I, I, would say, I would say, like, in the whole tournament, every match but one I would consider very good and many excellent. Like, there was no... You know, there was no matches the caliber of your best G1. Because I thought this was, as good as this was, I mean, it wasn't in the level of, you know, Osprey and Okada or Osprey and, uh, um, you know, uh, Naito, Naito, Okada, those matches. Didn't have the drama at all. But, 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 um, this tournament had no, you know, clunkers. You know, like G1 had many clunkers this year. This one had zero. So overall, for balance and everything, this was the tournament of the year easily. Easily. I mean, like, I don't think there's any, you know, anything even comes close. And, um, yeah, the um, 22 and a half minutes and just a freaking great match. Um, just chopped the hell out of each other. Hard hitting other. suplexes, hard kicks. Eddie flips him off there at the end. Great near and falls, then, great drama back. Last few minutes were, were excellent. I mean, they really, you know, Eddie was really on the verge of losing over and over again and then 
really great finish, you know, with this series of spinning back fists. And then he won with the power bomb, like his hero Toshiaki Kawada. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go. And I mean, Moxley even said, like, uh, you're going for the triple crown, the you know, the the title all your heroes held, you know, dating, you know, talking about 90s all Japan wrestling, which is Eddie Kingston's, you know, favorite wrestling. Well, the match is awesome. And then it's Eddie and Moxley in the finals. So Moxley comes out and he does this promo about how seems like you ate yourself, but everybody here loves you and they don't care whether you win or lose, but they do deserve 100 percent. And he says, I know you can't beat me. You know you can't beat me. For my money, you've already lost. You've already given up. You're already making excuses, but that's not going to fly this time. He says, a few years ago, I gave you a shot of a lifetime, but I let you off the hook. I let you go off on your shield. If you want to be the triple crown champion, you got to earn every inch. And he's about to say something else, but Eddie grabs a mic, and he says, don't you treat me by like your young boy bitch, Yuta. I'm not a young boy. I'm your senpai. I broke in before you. You're lucky I let you breathe. But he says, I hate myself more than anybody else, but on Saturday, the king of the bums is going to push you. You told me one time when I wanted to quit AEW, you're not allowed to quit. We need guys like you around. So I'm going to give everything I have, and you better show me your fighting spirit because I'm going to show you mine. This was an awesome face-to-face yeah, awesome setting up the forth. main event. Yeah, they did And it job. was the exact main event I figured was going to be from day one. John yeah. Moxley, Eddie Kingston in the finals. Well, I'd say Eddie's the favorite because, you know, I mean, um, Moxley's going for the global title, so... I would figure that uh, he's probably not winning this one and going over there with the belt. He's the favorite because it would be a horrible story for him to put up all of his belts in this tournament and then mm-hmm. lose. Yeah. Well. I mean, the announcers even called that weeks ago. They were like, can you imagine achieving your lifelong dream and then just putting your belts up in a tournament? And it's like, yeah, I can't believe that. So he's got to win this thing in the end. And he should. Just get his big win over Moxley here in the finals. Yeah. So we're supposed to have a sit down with Christian and Adam Copeland, but Adam showed up. They had a wild brawl, and uh, had a wild I think brawl. This was taped, I think this was taped last week. Could have been, yeah. Because uh, the extras were all Texas extras, and this was in Florida. You know, it's, the Von Erichs were backstage. Yeah. Brian Keith. So it looked like it was taped last week. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the um, you know the Von Erichs and Brian Keith didn't wrestle on Rampage or anything like that. So um, yeah, it it. it and Shayna was there last week. She wasn't there. You know what I mean? Then it was like a big curtain came down on one show, and the curtain came up on a totally different show. We had Sky Blue and Chris Statlander, the very definition of being in the death spot. And they're doing this match. Chris Statlander worked really good in this match, though. This yeah, was match but- was, This match was... Uh, a lot better than I expected it to be. The crowd did not see it that way. They just sat there. And Sky hit a middle rope code blue for the pin after Julia Hart took out Statlander behind the ref's back. Crowd was in a Statlander. Yeah. They were they were they were definitely with her. Double teamed her afterwards. Willow ran down to make the save. Abaddon came out on the ramp to be all spooky. And that was that. Yeah. I don't know, man. I wasn't that uh you know, when I saw like how how good Chris Statlander looked, um, even though she lost, you know, and then see Abaddon in there as the challenger for Julia Hart, it was kinda like a that's kind of weird. Like, I I don't know. Ho- hopefully they'll do something. We but... just saw Abaddon challenge for that title and lose. It was the other title. I know, but still. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not sold on Abaddon at that level at all. You know, whereas Chris is really good. And, um, they're, and they did a tease with Coach Stokely Hathaway trying to get Chris to basically to turn heel and join him, um, you know, and break up with Willow. So they were they were planting that seed, too. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.